Okay, guys, on to phase three of our lesson, which is create. Um, so this lesson section should take about 15 minutes. Um, I am going to explain everything to you for this section. I'm going to share my items and my story. And then I want you to take, like I said, about 15 minutes or so, or 10 minutes or so, um, to find this item for you. And then we'll go into our next phase, which is share. Okay, so the Lion King draws its experience or inspiration from many cultures, especially those of the South African culture. Um, which are brought to life by the ensemble through music, choreography, costumes, and languages. So on stage, we see these beautiful, bright colors and these different patterns. Um, this all comes from South Africa. Some of the languages that they sing in the show, um, you can hear the African influence. Um, some of the languages also have the click language, which the... I can't do it really well. I apologize. Um, that is in the words. So we're learning a song in our videos. So that's why we play those videos and it teaches you some of those words, which is great. Um, the other thing is the dance. So there's specific dances and moves that we see within the African culture that we see in the Lion King on stage. So all that influenced um, how the story came to life because the lesson of the Lion King or the original story is an African folklore. So they took their ethnicity and brought it back to its home and to share with the world. So I want you guys to think about, sorry, I'm reading my notes. I want you to think about um, cultural elements that make up your community and where you live, what makes it unique. Um, the area you live, is it the language, the clothing? Like, do you live in a neighborhood that has that. I know where I live, I have a wide range of culture, uh, different cultures here. Um, we have uh, African, we have Indian, we have Italian, we have um, Russian, um, then we have your Irish and your Italian. Uh, so everyone, like it's a melting pot and Philadelphia is huge for that. Um, us and New York, Chicago, our major cities are usually huge melting culture pots. Um, but my neighborhood is very heavy in that and uh, I love it because any time I want to go to a restaurant because a lot of our people that live around me have their own restaurants um, I can just walk down the block or walk down the a couple of blocks and go to a different restaurant every single night um, and they're owned by these families which is great um, so yeah um, so once we think about our elements in that let's think about our own culture do we know what our um, our culture background is? Uh, I know mine is as being a family historian in my family. I did the DNA test on Ancestry and 23andMe. Um, so I know my background. Um, I just knew that because my grandparents are kind of fresh off the boat. Um, well, I should say my great grandparents are fresh off the boat. So I'm third generation American for some of us, and then some of my family has been in America for a very, very long time. Um, so, yeah, so I want you guys to think about that. So then we're gonna find an object that represents our own culture. And in our journal, we're gonna make a list about the things you know of this item. And I'm gonna talk about some questions that I want you guys to answer about that item. So when you think about, um, your own. So I'll tell you mine. Uh, I am majority. I am Italian and Scottish. There are other ones in there like German and all that. Um, German, Irish, um, Greek. Um, but my majority of my culture is Italian and Scottish. So when you think about my Italian culture, you think about pasta, um, that type of stuff. This is actually pizza sauce. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I make my own gravy. So yeah, so when you think about times, you think about that type of thing. Um, so you can choose something like that. We're gonna just we're just looking for one object um, that represents your culture and the significance that you have to that item 
and how to tie that in. So I want to share with you the item that I chose. And I chose um, this mask, as you can see. Um, it is quite scary and a little bit elaborate. Um, it is very detailed. You can see the pictures on there. It's gold. Um, this is where it was made. So it says uh, Medigo de la... What's the name? Peste. So Medigo de la Peste. Um, this is a Venetian mask. And why this is significant to my culture. Um, so there is a thing called um, Carnavale uh, in Venice. And you may see these other masks. Um, they're not always this. They come in different other masks. Um, I have a picture here that I want to show you. So these are other masks that we will see. So we see these masks a lot. Um, and it's important to me. Or it's very significant of my culture because Venice is in Italy. Um, some of my Italian family is not too far from Venice. And I know... We, sell, we try to celebrate um, our mask days. A lot of us do celebrate it, um, which I'll get to in a second. But this is important um, because these kind of originate, these types of masks, in Venice. Um, so, like I said, it's called Carnavale. Um, it's Carnavale di Vincenzia. Uh, so it's Carnival of Venice. And not only do they wear these masks, they wear elaborate costumes and the costumes if, if, if it's a woman or a guy or whatever they wear big dresses and they usually are in couples and they match and they wear these giant hats with feathers and all that type of stuff like and i'll show you the picture um you can see their elaborate um costuming and they're usually in bright colors and all that type of stuff so um here's another one Let me see if I could pull up another one for you guys. So here's a bunch of masks that you can see a little bit. Sorry, there's a reflection. So what is Carnival? Um, so usually this festival is 40 days. It's a Christian holiday. Um, it usually happens 40 days before Easter. Um, so we call it a uh, Shrove Tuesday, but you guys know this holiday um, as Mardi Gras. Um, so Mardi Gras is Fat Tuesday. Um, for us, they call it Fat Tuesday. Um, so we have this kind of significance. We see this, my culture, um, kind of in New Orleans, um, wearing the mask. And in New Orleans, they, they Louisiana made it their own, and the colors are usually like the purple, the teal, and the gold. But that was inspired from Venice, and they call it Mardi Gras. Um, so yeah, so um, this is actually from Venice. It is made entirely by paper mache. Um, and I can show you guys kind of inside. I have, it ties onto your face, but inside, as you can see, it's just paper mache, which is kind of like um, a paper material, and they get glue, and they put it in there, and they just keep forming it. Um, this is what you call a doctor's mask, um, because of the long nose. Um, back in the day, when the plague was running in Italy, they would stick incense in the nose so they couldn't smell um, the disease. And, you know, that's good stuff. <laughs> um, so this is actually from Venice. Uh, you can see these all the time when you go to Italy. People make them. It was made by a woman named Maria. Um, she is actually like 98 years old. Um, she still makes these and she hand sells them on the bridge. Um, yes, so this is my mask. Um, it's super significant, like I said, um, because it started... Many people have these masks, number one. And uh, in theater, masks are used a lot. And we use that. It influenced our holiday, Mardi Gras, here in America. So one of the questions I want to ask... Um, you guys to respond in your journal, your comments, 
or the video blog that hopefully you may, guys may be making is, what object did you choose? Um, I chose my mask. What is the, the significance of this object? Um, this mask is used to celebrate the 40 days before Easter, called Shrove Tuesday, aka Mardi Gras. Um, and it is known worldwide for our elaborate costumes and our masks. Um, it's done in Venice. It's held every single year. Um, and it has usually 3 million people come to see the, this because it's celebrated throughout the entire city on the different piazzas. Um, and people come see this all over. Uh, so let me give you a just a little background of it. Um, it started as a military victory um, for the Venetian Republic in 1162. Uh, so we sh they gathered in San Marco Square, and everyone wore these different costumes, and it just happened to be 40 days before Easter, and that's why we celebrate it. Um, what else do I want to share with you guys? Sorry, there's a lot on here. <laughs> so yeah. Question that we want to say is it's significant, which I already did, so that was question two. Question three is, why do you keep this in your home? Um, I keep it in my home because I like collecting items from around the world. Um, I don't think you can see anything in my background that I have from around the world. Um, I do have a Buddha down there from Tibet. Um, so I do like collecting objects from around the world, but I keep this in here to remind me of my travels um, and my family. Because in my past, I don't know, did my family attend these when they lived in Italy? Um, did they make their own masks? Did they wear elaborate things? Um, I know I wear these during a show or play, if it's required. So it holds a lot of significance for me. It reminds me of theater, it reminds me of my family, it reminds me of my culture, and reminds me of a fun time. Um, and the next question, is, the last question for your journal is, what does this object mean to you? Um, that kind of tied in why I keep it at home. It just reminds me of a lot of, makes me remember my family, my Nona, um, and where she came from. So I was blessed to know her, and I know she came from Italy and Cachamo. Uh, so yeah, it has huge significance. It reminds me of my family, theater life that I actually love and live. Um, it just reminds me of a fun time. So for you, again, um, the questions are, why did you choose that object? What is the significance of the object to your culture? Why do you keep it at home? And what, uh, what does the object mean to you? So take as much time as you guys need. Um, find that object and share that object with us, which is our next phase, which is share. Um, so whatever you guys choose, tell us about it. Um, or take a picture with it and write a story. We want to see this. Put it in our class dojo portfolio for your student. Um, you can comment email us. Um, you can email me at kforbes at coreservices.org if you want to send me the story or picture. Um, we really want to see what you guys chose. So our last phase of today's lesson is our reflection. So this is where you're going to need your journal again and your pen or pencil. And we are going to have two writing prompts. Um, like I said, wherever skill level you guys are at with writing, um, you can write it out. You can write your response to the question. Um, you can write your thoughts. You can write a poem. You can write a haiku. You can draw pictures, or you could just put color swatches on how the question made you feel. Whatever you want. Um, I just want responses. So in your journal, you're going to date it today, um, whatever the date is. So I'm just going to write, what is today's date? <laughs> so I'm going to write May um, 12th, 2020. Should you always kind of start um, your journal entries um, with a date so it tells you how you felt on that day and you kind of remember why. So the first prompt in our journal is going to be um, 
how did you pick that object to share and why was it important? So those questions that I asked you in our create phase um, about the journal, you're going to just now write it. Um, so I chose my Venetian mask. Um, it comes from Italy, from my Italian background. And I chose it because it reminds me of my family. It reminds me of my trip. Uh, and it also reminds me of theater because I'm involved with theater and this is a theater session. So it reminds me of that and theater brings me great joy. So this mask brings me a lot of those memories. Um, so the second prompt we're going to write in um, our journal is what is something in your life that brings you pride? Um, an example of that can be a trait that you possess, um, a connection with a loved one. And the second part of that question is how does that affect your decisions you make every single day? Um, so I'm going to tie mine back into my family. Um, so a trait that I possess is um, I'm very creative. So I'm going to write creative in my journal. And I get that trait from a lot of my family members. Um, I come from a very creative family. Um, my grandfather taught me about theater at an early age. Um, so I was very lucky to be involved in the arts. Uh, I've been going to symphonies, orchestras, operas, musicals, plays um, at a very early age. Um, my grandfather was big and responsible in making sure I had that in my life. He also got me to play musical instruments. So um, I play the piano, I play the guitar, I play the ukulele, I play the saxophone, um, I sing. Um, and then my other grandfather was a dancer. Um, so, and same thing with my mom, both were dancers. Um, so I know how to dance. Um, I do ballet, I do tap, I do Broadway dancing, um, line dancing, mummer strut. I could do all of that. Uh, so I'm gonna, that creativeness of that. And I'm also, I can paint, I can draw. I get that all from my grandparents. Um, they're very super creative. And then my grandmothers are super creative food-wise. So I'm always inventing new recipes. Um, so creative is the trait that I chose that I possess. And my connection is to my family. So I'm gonna write all that in my journal. Um, and how the second part of that question is, how does it affect your decisions you make every single day? Um, they always just try it affects me every single day with every decision I make because I try to be better um, and I try to spread the love and creativity that I have for others to enjoy and learning. That's why I started my own theater group um, and we do all that type of stuff. It's more than just a theater group. We do paintings, we do photography. Um, it's a creative hub and I wanted to share that with the world and bring the best that I know of people um, that are really good in that field and bring them in to share with others. So that is your journal reflections. Make sure you write them in your journals. Again, the question is, why did you choose that object today? And why is it important to you? And the second part is, uh, what is something in your life that brings you pride? If it's a trait or whatnot, and how does it affect the decisions you make every single day? Um, you can write those in your journal. You do not share your journal entry. These are specifically for you guys. So I hope this helps you guys out. Like I said, I gave you a lot today in your lessons. Um, I want you to take the rest of the time to really think of those activities to do and share them with us. I hope you guys enjoyed today's session and I look forward to session number three. Bye guys.